Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delray again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm going to be covering more about the C-Sharp fundamentals. And specifically, we're going to be going through noble types, also using the coalesce operator, and lastly, using conditional null operator. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that I want you to do is click on the video 12 game object and then disable it. Now we're going to be creating a new game object. So let's click on create empty. This one is going to be called video 13. Then I'm going to click right click on the scripts area, create C sharp script. And this one is going to be for video 13. And if I'm going too fast, don't worry about it because I'm actually going to be checking this into source control, just like I've been doing with every single one of the videos that you have watched in this series. And you can also download it if you like to or clone the repository. All right, now that we have that created, let's go ahead and click on video 13 and select the video 13 script. Let's click on assets, open project, and let's focus on C sharp for now. So I'm going to delete the update method. We don't need that and also the first comments. So I want to give you kind of an overview of what, what null is because this video is going to be about nullable types. So you probably are familiar with this. You might already know what this is and this might be a refresher for you. But null is basically the, the value of something that hasn't been defined. So if you have an object that hasn't been defined, it's going to be null by default. If you have a reference type that hasn't been defined, it's going to be null. And if you have uh, basically like an integer or a decimal or a float, that's going to behave a little bit different than, than the reference types and objects. So what I want to give you an overview, it's basically of all the different types and what the default, default values are. And then we'll jump into explaining what nullable, nullable types are. So what I want to show you is what happens if I do, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? We can also do this. And we can also do here below beneath the string, we can say SS. And we can initialize it to that. So this is going to be our, our starting point for now. We will add more types as we go. So. If we do, for instance, if we do a debug that log, and you know, you'll see where I'm going with this, because I want to explain to you ex exactly what's happening. So if we do a debug that log on S, and I need to declare those, so I'm just going to say private a string, and instead of calling them S, let's call, call them something more explicit. So I'm just going to say first name. I'm also going to say private a string last name. This one is going to be initialized to an empty. Then we're also going to say private decimal D. And I'm just going to copy these a couple of times. It's going to change the type and the variable name. And lastly, it's going to be F. OK, perfect. So this one could be that we call it weight. This one can be H. This one can be distance, so that we get you know better, better naming and give you more context. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and do first name. And what I'm going to do on each one of these, I'm just going to say first name, and it's going to basically display the first name in the console and then the value. So I'm going to do that every for every one of these values, and I'm going to separate them with possibly just few dashes. So let's go ahead and add a few dashes here. OK, so we're going to do the same thing with last name, weight, h, and distance. Just going to replace the values. And this is going to make more sense as I as I show you in the console. So it's going to be last name. And then we're just going to put in last name in here. And then this one is going to be weight. And we're going to be putting the weight variable here. This one is going to be h. And this one is going to be the variable h. And lastly, we're going to have distance. And we're going to put in the, va the value, the variable distance. All right, so what I've done so far is we are basically, we basically declare private variables on the top. The only one that has a value right now, it's the last name. And even though you don't see values being set, there's actually values by default 
that are set for the first name, which is a string, which is a reference type, and also a value type, which is decimal, in a, an integer of age. So these all have default values. So let's see what the default values are. Let's go ahead and go back into the Unity Editor, click on Console, and I'm going to hit Play and see what happens. So now we can see what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and resize this so we can see everything. So we can see the first name value, default value, it's null. Then we have our separator. Then we have a last name, but we don't see null. We don't see null because we initialize it as, a, as an empty string. So that's correct. We're getting an empty, empty string. But wait, wait, we didn't get a null on wait, and that's because this is a primitive type, and the default value for this decimal type is 0. Now if we look at h, the default value for an integer is 0. Distance for a float, the default value of a float is zero. So now you can, you know, you can start to, to wonder, okay, well, now that I have, you know, I have a primitive type that has a zero, but the reference type is using a null, why can I not use, how can I get, you know, a primitive type with a null value? And that's, that's what I, that's what I want to lean to in this conversation and this explanation. So what happened if I go into H? Say that we go into h here and I say h equal null. Now if we go back into oops, that's giving us an error. And why is it giving us an error? Cannot convert null to an int. It is a non-nullable value type. So what happens if I do the same thing with distance? And we say, okay, I want to make distance null. And you might ask yourself, well, why, why is this not possible? And that's because that, that's one of the constraints of using these primitive types. You can't really set a decimal to a null value because the default value for it is zero. The same thing with the age and distance. For a string, you can, and that's possible. You can also initialize it to an empty string. So that's where that's where nullables come in handy, and and that's why I wanna I wanna show you in this video. So how could we make this work? How could we make you know weight a nullable? How could we make age a nullable? And that, that is as easy as adding a question mark after the type. So if I say, you know, if I add a question mark after each, and, and now if I go here and I say, okay, I want to make h null, you can, you can see that I'm not getting an error anymore. Now if I say distance is null, well, what if I wanted to say way is null? But maybe h doesn't make sense to be null. Maybe it makes more sense to, you know, to have zero in the age. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And this is set to clear, clear on play. So it's gonna clear the log and then basically rebuild the log. Now we can go down and we shouldn't have to look at any of these anymore because we know how the strings work. And if we look at weight and we can see, okay, yeah, we set it to null. So now we're getting a value of null where before we were getting a zero. Now, if I look at H, I was able to set it to zero, and I was also able to set it to null. So, wow, that works both ways. So now, in the distance, also works both ways. I'm getting a null. So, what happens if I go back in here and I say, well, you know, I don't want to set this. I want, I want the compiler to automatically set that for me, and maybe I don't want H to be zero. I want it to be null. Now, let's go back into Unity. He played to stop the game from playing, and let's let's go ahead and click play one more time. And now we can see that way by default has a null, age has a null, and distance has a null. So that's great. We can have, you know, we can have values, we can have an initializer of zero, we can also have a nullable type. So that's what nullable types are for, and they are very, very handy when it comes to and, and the reason for that is because you may want to make weight null. In some cases, you may want to have a value there. You may want to, you know, maybe set it to a default value of either you know, either zero, or you may want to set it to something else. So what other things are available in all of the types? So you can do, there's a lot of cool things because this is basically a wrapper to a class called nullable. And the way that it works is basically defined like that, like so. And nullable has a lot of different features available for us. So what if I wanted to say something like, you know, I want to make sure that distance is always set to five, for instance. So you can say something like, okay, if, you know, if I say if distance equal equal null, then I know that I want to set distance to a value. And I'm going to say five for now, 
maybe 500. And, and then I can say, okay, you know what? I have, I have the value of distance there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the, the value of distance right after the check was made. And I initialize it to 500. So now let's display the value. So let's go back to Unity and hit play. So now you can see the value of distance that is set to 500 because we have a nullable type now and we're checking to see if it's null. And if it's null, we set it to 500. So let's go ahead and go back into Visual Studio Code. And I want to, I want to change one thing. So let's go ahead and remove this question mark and see what happens. So if we remove the question mark, what's gonna happen is the compiler is gonna warn us and say the result of the expression is always false since a value of the type flow is never gonna be equal to null. So if we go back in here and I hit play, we're gonna see that it's actually not set to 500 because it's never gonna be true. This is actually the default value is zero. So let's go ahead and put the question mark back. And what I wanna do now is now we're able to check for nulls on these different types, which are primitive, primitive types. So what if I wanted to check if it had a value in a different way? So if you, you can also do something like this. You can say if distance. And if you do distance that, you can see that we now have access to two different options, actually multiple options, but one that I wanna show you is has value. So that has value is a property telling you if you know if the flow that you're declaring has a default, has a value already. So let's see what happens if I say, if I do this, if I do debug.log, and then it has a value. And then on the else, we're just gonna say it does not have it does not have a value. And we can probably just say distance has a value and distance does not have a value. So let's go back and uncheck this and see what happens. So we can see that we're getting distance as a value and that's because we set it to a value before. So if you go back here, we can see that we're setting the default value to be 500. But if we were to move this, if we move it up right before we set it to 500, we can see something different. So now let's go ahead and hit play. Now you can see that distance doesn't have a value. So has value is another is another property that it's available to nullables that I use quite a bit. So if you need to check whether something has a value that is a nullable type, then you can use that one as well. So let's check another one as well. So if we go down here, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say debug.log and then we can say distance. And we also have access to value. Let's see what that gives us. If we go back in here and hit play, now we're gonna see distance doesn't have a value because that was before it was set. Then we're getting a 500 and then we're getting another 500. So the value property basically gives you the, gives you the value of the nullable type. So that's what that one is. So what if we do get value or default? And you can see that I have, there are two overlo overloads. So if I go back, see what the overloads are. And see if I can get it back. We can do that one. Let's see, we can hit the down arrow. Okay, we have a default value. And this is this is really cool because we could set the default value to be something different. Maybe we, we may want to set the default value to be negative one. So if we wanted to do that, we could say, we could say something like this. And we can just set in distance equal to be negative one because that's gonna be the default value. And then here we can say debug.log, distance new default value is, and then we'll just print out the new default value. We'll just print the distance and see what we're getting. And keep in mind that we haven't set distance just yet. So we're setting distance right beneath it. So at this point, distance hasn't been set, but we're overriding the default value of distance, which the default value of distance is a float 
which is null in this case, but we're overriding it to negative one. Now if we go back and we say, you know, we hit play, we can see that the distance new default value is negative one. So that allows us to control what the default value is. We can also do, if we didn't want to do this, we could say, okay, give me just the default value that the framework provides and hit play. And you can see the default value, it's going to be zero, which is which is correct in this case. So, so now I introduce, I introduce you to has value. You also look at get value or default. And you can also you can also override these to either a negative one, like I show you if you wanted to override what the default value was. And I also show you you can now with nullables, you can now check for nulls. So another thing that I want to show you here, so I show you that, you know, we we can deal with strings. We can also set an empty string. We also look at, you know, setting, actually using these as nullables by adding a question mark, also for an integer and also for a float. So there's another thing that I want to cover in this video, and that is the coalesce operator. And that is this operator. So let's say that, for instance, let's now deal with age, for example. H right now is set to, is basically not set, so we have it set to null. So now if we wanted to do something like, and let's concentrate maybe in the in the H area. So this is what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and add a comment here, and I'm going to say distance, so that we know that this is for distance, and then H. So I just say distance, examples. And then we can say age examples. And if I do some of these, we can we can definitely add another comment. Okay, and then we can concentrate on that area. So so what I want to do for age is I want to use the operator in the coalesce operator is basically two question marks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, what I'm what I want, I wanna say, I wanna get I wanna get a new age, but if age is null. I want to set a default age. Maybe we want to set the default demographics might be 18, and that complete that works. So what's happening here, and this is basically the coalesce operator. What this is going to say, okay, if this is null, I'm going to try the next value. This is null, I'm going to try the next value. So we could we could actually have a change of variables in here, and then it's always going to be checking. Okay, if this is null, give me the next one. So let's see what happens if we do this. So let's do this right before we print it. Let's actually do it twice. So let's do let's do it right here where we haven't even set it. Then we'll do we won't end it. And then we'll do new H right after. So let's do it here. And then we'll just say new H. New H. And let's see what happens now if I go to Unity and we hit play. And now you can see that by default we're getting a null. Then I'm also getting a new H, and the new H is also null. And the reason for that is because this is actually this is actually true, meaning that it has a default value, and the default value in this case is null, so it's given as the first number. So what if we change this to say has value? So that's definitely not going to work because the question mark cannot be applied to these types, which is a Boolean. So what if we do value? That's also not going to work because this is actually an, an integer. So what I'm going to do here is I thought this was going to work, and I think it's not working because I set the wrong variable. There we go. I thought for a minute that I was going crazy, but that's actually, it was correct. <laughs> so let's go ahead and hit play one more time. Okay, so now, now we're getting H, which is null, and then the new H, which is 18. I really thought I was going crazy in here for just a minute. So let's do, let's do one more thing. Let's do add another variable here. And this one is going to be nullable as well. And let's actually call this one new H. And this one I'm not going to set either. And then on this one, I'm going to say new final H. And I want to show you that we can change this. So I'm going to say new H and another question mark, question mark. And let's see what's happening here. Use of an assign. Okay, so the reason why it's doing it is because it's in this context. 
I will need to add another h in here, so I'm just going to say new h. And now I have two variables. And instead of declaring it in there in the local scope, there we go. So now we have a nullable, which is h, and then another nullable with new h. And I have the h of 18. So what happens now if I go into Unity and hit play? There we go. So now we're seeing h. We're also seeing null and new h equal null. I think I did something. OK, we want to print the new final h. So let's go back. Looks like I make the same mistake that I did before. So I'm going to hit play one more time. And now we should also get the value of 18. So you can see that this is really powerful because you can also change. You also have to be careful how much you change. You don't want to go too deep either to a point where it's really hard to read. So what would happen if I say that the new age is going to be 15? So now, now if we look at this code, what we're saying is, OK, if h is null, which in this case is true, I'm going to try the next variable. Is the new age null? So we're going to say, no, it's not null. So we're going to grab 15, and we're not going to keep checking to the right. So let's go back into Unity. And let's go ahead and hit Play. Now we can see that the new age is 15. And that is because the second variable is not null anymore, because I'm overwriting it in here. So that's how we can use the coalesce operator. So now what I'm going to do is let's try one more. And that, that is the basically a conditional operator for nulls that I, that I want to show you how it works. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to use any of these variables, because we need to get deeper into an object. And what I'm going to do here is what I'm going to do, let's add a new class. This class is going to be the multiplayer class. And I'm just going to call it multiplayer. And in the multiplayer class, I'm just going to have, maybe we store the IP address of you know, the, where, the, where the game is happening. And we also store, we could also store the host or the domain name. And just call it host. And we can actually do these ones as properties so it's easier to read and access. And we can do the same thing here. Let's do an auto getter and an auto setter. And we can add some space in here so it's easier to read. All right, so now let's go into the player. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do two, two different things. On the first one, I'm going to say, OK, I want a new, a new public variable. And it's going to be of type multiplayer. And let's see, we need to bring it in. So let me make sure this is public. And make sure that I have the same. So if I go back to the player, OK, let's remove the namespace for now. So I don't have to add the using statement. OK, let's go back into player. And we're just going to say multiplayer. And let's say that this was the first multiplayer. maybe first multiplayer game, for instance. Then we can get another one where we're actually creating a new object. And then this one is going to be the second. Maybe these are rooms. We can say first room. And then maybe this one is the second room for the multiplayer game. And so if you notice, this one is starting at null. And in fact, we can actually make this one just null. And what I'm going to do is let's go back into the multiplayer and add another variable here. And maybe just add, we, we add minutes play. So we can say, is that a float? And I just say minutes play. And this one, I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to make it nullable. Excellent. And let's add another one where we are setting it to something. So let's say that this was, for instance, a distance play. Maybe this is a runner. And let's say that by default, we start at, I don't know, we start, we start at 100 because it's so easy to, to get to that. We also make this one nullable. All right, so what I want to do is I want to show you how the conditional conditional works for nullables. So there's another thing that we can do here. So I'm going to do 
we can say conditional null walls. And this might be called something different, but I'm gonna once you see it, you'll understand it. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new player. This one is gonna be a player, new player. And I, did, I think I have a default constructor. Let me make sure that I do. I don't have a default constructor, so that's fine. We can just say John Doe is my, John is my first name, and then Doe is my last name. The age is, maybe this person is 30, and maybe John Doe has an Xbox Live, live.com ID. Okay, so, so far so good. We created a new object and we have a player. So now if you remember, I had, instead of a player, I had a multiplayer, I had a first room. And I also had a second room. So what I'm gonna do here is if, if I try to do this, if I say first room, and then let's say that I wanted to get the IP address of the first, of the, of the first room, and let's say that I wanted to print that out. Let's see what happens in 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 Unity. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And this is what I was expecting. I'm expecting a null because the first room hasn't been even set. So if we go back in here and we look at the and we look at the room under the player, you notice that I set it to null, so you're getting a null exception. And that was expected, that's what I was expecting to do. So what I'm gonna do is let's go back into the multiplayer and I'm gonna I'm gonna add a default IP address. Let's say that I do 192, 168, That's the default IP, and then maybe the host we say, you know, mycoolgame.com. And then I think everything else should be fine. Now let's go back in here. And this one is going to always throw an exception as it is right now, so I'm going to comment it out. But on the second one, which is the second room, we want to now display the IP address. We want to display the minutes play. In fact, let's display the host. And let's display the minutes play. And let's go back into Unity and let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. All right, so on this second one, everything works. I'm getting the IP address, I'm getting the domain, the host, and also I'm getting a null because the minutes play is set to null. And if we go back to multiplayer, let's also display the distance play. And let's go back here and I'm gonna do distance play. So, so, so far, this is gonna work. We're gonna be printing out everything that we have in the player. But, but the first room, it's not gonna really work. And I want to make sure that I, that I can make this work. I want to make sure that I can, I can still access the player. So how can we check to make sure the first room is not, you know, if it hasn't been set, maybe, maybe I'll use the second room. So one way that we can do this is we can say, we can say first room, which is gonna be of type multiplayer, and then multiplayer room. And what we can do here is this first room is gonna be null, right? So we can get a, basically a question mark after that. And if we notice, we're now getting, cannot explicitly convert a type string to multiplayer. And that is expected because I'm trying to get the IP address, which is the last so what I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead and check this type as well. And also check that. And we're getting the string. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove that. In this case, I can I could add a question mark, question mark, and then say, okay, if the first room is not getting used, I'm gonna try player that second room. And this is gonna be the room that is gonna be available because the first room is nullable. So I'm just gonna replace that with what we did here. Also what we did there. And also with minutes, with minutes play. And this actually needs to be renamed because it has a typo. So we just do minutes play. There we go. So now if we go back into Unity, 
and I'm gonna stop the game from playing and it looks like we have an error let's go ahead and double click it and let me make sure that the rename worked looks like it did work and let's go back into video 13 let me make sure that it, it is public go back in here into unity and see what the error is multiplayer does not contain okay you just needed to refresh let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens everything is everything is working we're getting the second room because the the first room is null so that's really not everything that i wanted to show you i want to show you how we can use a conditional and the conditional goes like this you can say something like you know i want to grab maybe this other this other parameter and then you add a question mark and then if that is null it basically re returns null so you don't have to be checking you know you don't have to be checking for a specific variable types if they're null or not that what this will do is we'll stop right here and then basically set that as the variable so we can say something like var and then we can say is set so let me see if i can do if we can make this work if i say something like i think i need to go deeper in here into multiplayer we can add another class i'm going to add another class here and call it and let's call this one class we'll just call it host and in the host i'll just add i'll just go ahead and move this one this variable we can also move the ip address and let's go ahead and clean this up there we go and then this one is just going to be the host name and IP address. I think that works. And then here we'll just do public host host. And then we'll just set it to nothing. It's going to be a nullable. Okay, excellent. And maybe we'll just say primary host. And we'll set this one to, to basically have a host and the secondary host dairy host it's gonna be set to null okay so that i think that works well i'm going to be checking okay i think this is gonna work fine if not we'll try we'll also try doing a nullable here and this is gonna be the location of the host and we'll just make that one nullable all right see so we can make this work let's go ahead and redo that all right so let's go back into the player into video 13 and we're gonna have to change these ones because they were refactored so this one is gonna be the host name and then we'll just say primary host and then the IP address make sure that that is true that the primary the primary is going to be set because I'm creating a new object of that type so I think we should be good there so let me check and see now if I do multiplayer room and then the secondary host and then what we'll do is we'll try to grab the IP address let's see what this is this is complaining about and this is complaining about that and this is going to be okay excellent this is going to work great so we're, we're just going to say IP address of second host. Excellent. So you can now see what's happening here, right? I have a question mark and I have an IP address. So what's going to happen here is I'm gonna, I really want to get the IP address of this. And I don't want to have to check to see, okay, if the secondary host is null and if this is null. And it just basically makes the code really hard to read. So what happens with the question mark conditional here? I'm making sure that if secondary host is null, I'm not going to bother and try to get the IP address. I'm basically just going to return the default value of the value that I'm trying to return. So let's see, let's see what happens if I do the block log. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm just going to say the, let's go ahead and print out that. And then at the end, I'm just going to print out the value. And let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And I'm just going to hit play. 
and you can now see it didn't blow up it didn't throw an exception and this is awesome because i can now add a question mark conditional to basically to try to retrieve the ip address because the second but the second host was down so what i returned was the null which was the default value so how can we make this better though like if you really wanted to make sure that you get an ip address so let's say that if for instance we wanted to get uh, for whatever reason we wanted to get uh, the IP address of the of the second host right away, but but the the but that one was blowing up. But we needed an IP address, so we know that the, the primary host has an IP address. So I could have done this. I could also do the question mark question mark, and then try to grab the second one. And I can also add a conditional there. And let's see what happens now. If I go ahead and hit play. And you can now see that I'm getting an IP address. So I have a lot of different concepts that I'm that I'm basically showing you through here. And this might look a little complicated at first, but really all it's doing is I'm checking to make sure that if this is no, then I get the default value of the IP address, which is a reference type. So I'm getting no. The the call less is basically checking to see, okay, if this expression is null, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get the value from the next expression. We know that the primary host was set because we looked at it from the, basically from the console. And we also know that we set it on the multiplayer. So that's how that works. This is really, really powerful when it comes to, you know, null checking. So just let me just give you an overview of everything that I cover and my apologies if I cover more than I thought I was gonna cover because we actually went way beyond what I wanted to cover. But I think this gives you enough information to, you know, to get you ready to, you know, if you need to check for null, so if you need to be aware of what nullable types are, this should give you a lot of information about that. So just as a recap, we went through, you know, trying to look at all the default values that either, you know, the string has, what the decimal has, what an integer has, and also a flow. We also declare some private variables and we use different examples to basically determine what was available in an nullable type, also what was available in a in a reference type. So, and then lastly, I kind of walk you through, you know, using the coalesce operator and also the conditional operator for a nullable. So that's everything that I'm gonna cover today, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers. Their forums are great, their people are great. Make sure that you check them out. And don't forget to check out my Patreon page where I'm basically putting a lot of information on what's happening behind the scenes in the channel. I'm also providing a lot of source code in there for everybody that is watching my videos. And also, thank you very much for watching the video.